All right, guys, so this is probably the last video that I'm going to do in regards to any of this kind of stuff before the actual keynote happens because you guys are probably all bombarded with all kinds of iPhone rumors and launch news and speculations and stuff like that. So I'm just going to get this one out of the way and then I'm going to relax for the weekend just like you guys should and we'll get on with the show on, on Tuesday when Apple releases their keynote. I was over on 9to5Mac, which is one of the sites that I like to go to, and they actually had a full lineup that they had in regards to their uh, leaks and camera upgrades, pricing, release dates, colors, etc, etc, and I thought that you and I would just kind of talk about that. So here's, here's their website right here. So this is 9to5Mac, and it does look like there's a bunch of information in regards to, we'll say, the three main units that are coming out so the iphone 12 mini the iphone 12 and the iphone 12 pro which would also encapsulate the iphone 12 pro max so if we kind of come down here you will see and we'll, we'll start talking a little bit first about things like the camera so a few things that are kind of cool with the camera especially on the pro line so on the iphone 12 pro you'll see three cameras uh, plus the lidar scanner so you're going to get the wide angle the standard lens and the telephoto lens so that's going to give you on the iphone 12 pro uh four times they say of optical zoom range so that, that's actually pretty good there have been some rumors that are out there right now that say that the telephoto lens on the iphone 12 pro series would or could be a three times optical versus the two times that we saw on the iphone 11 pro uh, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, very similar in specs. So the iPhone 12 Pro Max, three cameras again with LiDAR, ultra wide, wide, and a telephoto system. And that would give the whole system upwards of five times optical zoom. Again, it's interesting to see if we will see a two times telephoto lens, which has been on all the previous models of the 11 Pro. We'll say I see the previous models, but of the 11 Pro. Or will we see a three times, which has a bit of a rumor out there. And as grand as that is, the big ones for me is that it says that we should expect improvements to smart HDR, deep fusion, and night mode. And these are all really cool features of the iPhone 11. So if we can see some improvements on the iPhone 12, that's great because they were actually really useful, especially things like night mode. We took some photos when we were on holidays, when we were allowed to be on holidays at the beginning of the year. So I believe it was in January and the night mode was just so surprising how well it worked. You and I could possibly get those photos, possibly with long exposure, but who has a chance when you're just out and about to be able to pull out a tripod and pull out all this gear and then set up for a couple minutes to get that shot when you can just hand hold and get these night shots. If they can improve that, that that's a huge one. Um, other tidbits they say here for all four of the iPhone 12 models, Dolby Vision. So Dolby Vision video recording on all four models. Um, yes, please. We just got a television. We just bought a new TV that supports Dolby Vision. Apple TV, of course, supports Dolby Vision, as long as you have a television that supports it. And being able to record your own home videos, home movies that also support Dolby Vision. And I think that's just going to be amazing if you and I can actually produce things with Dolby Vision to them. Hopefully... And I would think that they would have to upgrade their Final Cut and possibly iMovie Suite to be allowed for that kind of encoding. But we all know that uh, Final Cut will definitely be getting an update soon, uh, especially since we're expecting some kind of silicone Mac to come out. And that would mean that all their software, including their pro apps, would have to be compatible. That's, that's definitely on the horizon. And that's going to be something if you and I can actually work with Dolby Vision footage. Next one here is smart data mode to allocate 4G, 5G according to application bandwidth. 5G, of course, would only be used when it's necessary because they want to make sure that the battery health isn't getting affected too hard so that we're not getting a machine that is in 5G mode all the time and our battery is just taking a huge hit. All four models will feature 5G, but an MM wave will only be available in the US. So for those of us here in Canada, I guess we won't get that. Uh, Super Retina XDR display. New glass technology on the front will increase durability. Ceramic shield front cover. Whatever that means. But anytime we can get better, we're all over that. 
This is where they say things get really interesting in regards to release dates. And this has been something that we have heard a lot over the last few months is that there will be a staggered release date, basically because certain models were not going to be ready. But of course, they didn't want to hold back the iPhone release date any later than they had to. So it looks like the iPhone 12 6.1 inch and the iPhone 12 Pro 6.1 inch it says pre-orders October 16th through 17th and would be available October 23rd, 24th. So those would be the ones that we would have primarily ready right after the keynote. And the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12 Pro Max would have pre-orders November 13th and 14th and they would be available November 20th and 21st. About a month difference between those two. So if you're looking at a 12 Pro Max or the new 5.4 inch iPhone 12 mini, you may have a bit more of a weight in front of you. For me, I'm looking at that 6.1 inch, so I should I should be good. Okay, iPhone 12 mini. Color-wise, black, white, red, blue, green. Not bad. Uh, comes in 64, 128, and 256 gigs. Dual cameras, wide angle, ultra wide angle. And again, there's the pre-orders starting at $700 US. If you guys are looking at figuring out what it's gonna come out for pricing in your country, just run that number through some kind of conversion and I'm sure you'll be close. 6.1 inch iPhone 12, black, white, red, blue, and green. Now we don't know if these are gonna be more pastel colors, which they've kind of been in the past, or will we start to see something a little more vibrant that we don't know. Uh, 64 gig, 128 and 256, so same storage as the iPhone 12 mini. Uh, dual camera again, Dolby Vision video recording, and again, this is October 16th, 17th for pre-orders. This one's starting at $799. Uh, iPhone 12, now this is gonna be the one that we'll pre-order a little later, and again, released a little later. Color-wise, gold, silver, graphite, and blue. Looks like they've gone away from the space gray terminology and gone to graphite, and blue. We've all heard this rumor of the blue, so that could be cool. Kinda sad that they got rid of the green. I really like the green. Uh, wide angle, ultra wide angle, telephoto plus LiDAR and four times optical zoom. So it is saying four times optical zoom. So that's interesting to hear. Uh, Dolby Vision again, 128 gig, 256, 512, starting at 999, so the $1,000 range. My guess would, Canadian wise, would bring it in around a $1,300 mark. iPhone 12 Pro Max, gold, silver, graphite, and blue. So same again as the iPhone 12 Pro. Wide angle, ultra wide, telephoto, LiDAR. So it does say here though, focal length telephoto, five times optical zoom. So we're going from four to five with the max and an expanded ultra wide. Not sure what that means, but again, interesting. Again, Dolby Vision video recording, pre-orders November 13th, 14th, with it being available November 20th slash 21st, 128, 256, 512 gigs coming in at $1,100. So it does look like if you are wanting an iPhone, and the camera is probably the most important thing. This is gonna be your camera. This is for someone that doesn't use a camera like I'm shooting with, a traditional style camera, but wants all those features in their smartphone. If you don't mind the size, the iPhone 12 Pro Max looks like the device to get, followed by the 12 Pro, of course. Really gonna be interesting to see. I've been tossing it back and forth whether I wanna spend the extra money for the 12 Pro. 12 Pro Max for me is just physically too big. Uh, but between the 12 Pro and the 12, really for me it comes down to what are those additional features that that telephoto lens is gonna bring. But that's something that you and I are only gonna see on October 13th when we watch the Apple presentation. So kind of exciting. Um, in regards to some of the other products that were supposed to be coming out or have been rumored to be coming out, uh, the HomePod mini still sounds like it could be a possibility that we see it sometime during the year. But one of the big ones that we have seen that may not was the Apple AirTags and that these may actually be pushed all the way back to next year. I guess they just wanna make sure they get it right. But again, these are all speculation and rumors. We really have no idea uh, if these are gonna be coming out. And maybe they just talk about it with an announced date. It's not unheard of for Apple to showcase a device and say it'll be ready next month or before the end of the year or first quarter of 2021. That's not unheard of for them to do that. This is a big showcase for them. So we really don't know what we're going to see, but a lot of the rumors are saying the AirTags could be pushed back. Now, in regards to the HomePod mini, it does look like they're talking about price point. And over on Mac Rumors, they actually said that the HomePod mini will launch next month. So not right now, but again, they could announce it 
maybe they do pre-orders, I'm not too sure, but that it'll come out at $99. So way better of a purchase price and becomes something that is really great for the holiday season. So many people are looking for products to give other people, especially other like Apple users and things like that. And HomePod itself was a fantastic speaker, still is a fantastic speaker, but one of the issues is that it's just kind of priced out of that gift giving amount. So because they, as we saw in a lot of articles that came out recently, Apple has kind of gotten rid of all the non-Apple branded or Beats branded speakers and headphones from their retail and online stores. So my guess is that they need to have something that fits into that budget. And there was a lot of speakers from UE and from Bose that really fit in that $100, $150 price range. So they're going to need something that's going to fill that void. And I think the iPod mini will be exactly that. My only hope is that they increase the abilities of the HomePod mini and allow it to either have at least Bluetooth in it so that you and I can connect whatever we want to it. and It doesn't have to strictly go through AirPlay and would be fantastic. But I, I have my doubts that they would actually have a line in jack on it so that we could actually hardwire something. Are we going to see that? I don't know. But hopefully we'll see more in regards to some of these products come this Tuesday, 10 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. That's it for me today. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And this will be the last video that we talk about in regards to the upcoming speculations and rumors of the Apple October event. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Later, my friends.